Hello, this is Abhishek with a tutorial on shared preferences. Well, in Android, there are multiple ways to store the data in the phone memory like text file, in key value pairs, a database for complex data, and in the form of multimedia like images and other file formats. This is called data persistence, and each and every method has their own advantages and use cases. Today is all about shared preferences. Shared preferences stores the data in the form of key value pairs. The key is used to locate the data, update it, and even remove it. The value is in the form of primitive data type. It can be int, long, float, boolean, string, and even string set. String set is nothing but a set of strings. Shared preferences is lightweight storage for apps. There are multiple applications of shared preferences. For example, when you log in, there's an option whether you want the app to remember your login details or not using the remember me checkbox. Then there is settings of the application. Lastly, you can store prices of different items. In this tutorial, you will learn how to make your own shared preference. So I have created the layout for this tutorial beforehand. It is a very basic layout. It has three edit text, first for the name, second for the age, and third for the number. Then we have a switch button to whether the user wants a night theme or not, and a check box which says remember me to save the details, and we have a save button. You can find the code for this layout on the github repo. Now let's head to the main activity.kt in which you are going to type the entire code. For shared preferences you need two things first the shared preference object and second the editor for the shared preference. To get the object for the shared preferences you can use the method get shared preferences. It will take two parameters first the name of the preference and second the mode in which you want to open the preferences. So for the name I will write my pref and for the mode I will use context dot mode private. It basically means the shared preference can be accessed only by this application. Next thing that you will need is the editor object for the particular shared preferences. So create another variable editor and to get the editor object use preferences dot edit. It is showing a warning because I have not used preferences dot apply. We want to take the input when the user clicks on save button. So for that set an on click listener to the save button when the button is clicked we want to take the input and save it in a variable so name age number and is night theme enabled so for name named underscore edit text dot text dot to string to convert the input into the string then for the age like age underscore text dot text then convert it into to string and then to int and for others like number to long to long and for, for number dot text dot to string dot to long. Lastly for is night theme enabled that is a switch theme switch dot is checked. It will check whether the switch theme is checked or not. So now we have taken all the values from the input. Now we have to check whether the user wants to save the value or not. We will use an if condition to check whether the user has checked it or not. So remember me checkbox dot is checked. If the checkbox is checked, it will return true and our following code will be executed. To store the values, you need to use put and followed by the type of the variable. So if you want to store the int, you will write put int for string, put string, then for boolean, put boolean, for float, put float, put long, and lastly for string set, put string set. So I want to insert string. First is the key which is of type string and then the value. So for key I will write key underscore name then for the value the value that I got from the user. Similarly for integer dot editor dot put int then key underscore age then age then for then for number which is our which is of type long then key underscore number comma number and lastly for the is night theme enabled which is of type boolean so editor dot put boolean then key underscore is night theme enabled comma is night theme enabled so now we have stored all the values to actually store the values in the shared preferences we need to call another method that is apply so editor dot apply and the values are now saved as soon as I wrote editor.apply, the warning over here 
is gone because we saved the changes that we made in the preferences. To save the values, we need an editor and to retrieve the value, values, we need the preferences. That's it. Like to store the values of type string, we use put string to get the string value. We use get string. Similarly, for integer dot get int, for boolean dot get boolean, for float get float and so on and so forth. So I will retrieve the first value that is name of type string. So I will write get string. It takes two parameters. First is the key and second is the default value. The reason it is taking default value is what if the key doesn't exist in the shared preference. So the default value is returned. So let's say the key is key underscore name that it is the same key that I used to save the value. It will be the key that is going that I'm going to use to retrieve the value. Then the default value is an empty string. It is going to return. So let's save the result in a name. I will view these values using a log message. So log D to write a log message. It, it is saying it doesn't have a tag. So I will write a tag over here. A log is used to log messages. And it takes two parameters. First tag used to identify the log. And then the second one is the message. For message, you can type anything, the message that you want to type when a particular log is executed. So I want the values of name, age, number, and is night theme enabled. And we are good to go. So run the application, give the input values. The long message you can see, it is typing the default values because we have not saved the shared preference file in the memory. So it is not having the keys and it is returning the default values. Once we save the values, it will have the values. Check remember me and click on save and close the application. Open the application again. Check the log messages. You can see the values that you typed earlier are being written over. This shows that the values that you saved earlier are being retrieved now. There's a method to clear the values. So editor.clear. So if the user doesn't click on remember me, we should clear the saved values in the shared preferences. So put an else block for remember me checkbox and type editor dot clear. It will clear all the values that are saved in the shared preferences. You can also observe the changes whenever the value is updated in the shared preference. For that, you need to add a shared preference on change listener to the activity. It is showing an error because we have to implement the method. It has one method on shared preference changed. It has two parameters shared preference and the key value. So check whether the shared preference is null or not. So for that shared preference comma let and if it is not null this set of code will be executed you can write an if statement to check whether the shared preference is null or not this is just the kotlin way of doing it i will write a log message log d on shared preference change listener called and i will type all the values it has using all it will return all the key and values it has now to actually observe the values you need to register the listener to the shared preferences so use the preference object preferences dot register on shared preference change listener and type this to avoid memory leaks you should also unregister when the activity is destroyed for that override a method on destroy and unregister it as you can see i cannot refer the object over here so change the scope of the variable from local to global using private late in it where preferences of type shared preference now we can refer the same object in the on destroy using this on register and followed by this just a quick note the late init pair basically means i'm creating a variable named preferences of type shared preferences and i will initialize it later whenever you are writing late init pair you must initialize it before using it otherwise you will get an exception so let's run the application now in the log cat you can see the values click on save see in the log edit wrote on shared preference changed because as soon as the value is changed in the preferences, the method was called. There are other operations that you can perform like contains which is used to check whether a key exists in the shared preference or not. Then there is a remove function which is used to remove a particular key from the shared preferences. And that's all for the shared preferences. It is the simplest way to store the data in your application. You can find the link of the source code in the description and if you have any doubt, leave a comment below. Hope you guys learned something new today. Please hit like and subscribe to support me and hit the bell icon for notifications. See you in the next video. Happy coding.